Hey there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Before I get into the wrap up, I want to say hello and welcome to all of my new subscribers. I'm so happy to have you here. Olive over at A Book Olive was kind enough to shout me out along with a bunch of other wonderful YouTubers that you should check out, so I'll link that video down below. Um, this is a wrap up, so it'll give you a decent idea of some of the things I read, but if you'd like a bit more of a holistic look at who I am, check out my new to booktube tag video. It's not all that old and a lot of recommendations in there for all different kinds of books. Also at the end of Vlogmas I did three videos on my favorite reads of 2018. That's another great way to know more about me. And yeah, welcome! I have seven books to talk about in this video, which is a bit more than my usual, but three of them are for the Booktube Prize. If you haven't heard of it, the Booktube Prize is being run by Robert over at Barter Hordes, and it's our own literary prize, concentrating on literary fiction, and there's different groups and different judges, and I am acting as a judge. It's wonderful and great, but we can't really talk about what we're reading until the results are up, so I'm going to be very elliptical and mysterious. Let's call it mysterious about those books. The first book I have was actually the last book I finished at the very end of January, but it's perfect for February and my reading blackout. It's Fit by Rebecca Weatherspoon. It's the first book in her Fit series. The cover makes it look like a dark story, but it's not at all. The heroine is Violet, she's Chinese-American, and she's a producer for a show on the Food Channel, and being around all this delicious food all day has not been good to her body, so she decides to get fit. Not because she wants to lose pounds, not because she needs to fit in a certain dress side, size, but because she wants to feel fit and better in her own body. A friend takes her to some extreme fitness class and needless to say it does not go well, so she ends up hiring a personal trainer to help her meet her where she is and that ends up being Grant. Grant is a white guy, he's a fitness trainer and part owner of a gym, but not only that, he's also asexual dominant because they need day jobs too. He usually doesn't mix business and pleasure, but then he meets Violet and sparks fly and things happen. I'm not going to go into too much more detail because it's short, I think it's 88 pages, so I don't want to give everything away. There's so much to love here. First and foremost, interracial relationship written by a queer woman of color. I am and forever will be here for that. Violet is fat, but she's not trying to get skinny, she's trying to become healthy, which I love. When these two first meet, Grant makes some blunders in the conversation, and Violet's responses are funny and real and wonderful to read. The BDSM is gentle, it's full of consent, and it's fun. I really like Weatherspoon's writing in here and in other books I've read by her, and she manages to get a novella where the plot perfectly fits its page length. It doesn't feel like she's squishing in too much or that there's not enough information. And there's also a small b-plot, which you don't usually find in novellas, and making that all fit and work so well, I was impressed. The only large knock I have against this book is that the beginning was pretty info dumpy, but other than that, I really liked it. This was a perfect read at the perfect time for me. I had a night where I couldn't sleep, and it was just the thing I needed. The second book I finished was for the booktube prize, so I'm going to be cagey about it. I liked it. I was worried going in. There were a bunch of things that I wasn't sure if I'd get along with them, but they worked out pretty well. I can't say it was a great read, an amazing read, but it gave me a lot to think about, and even though I had problems with it, I could admire it for what it is and what it did. So it was a like a high three star read, maybe like a 3.5 star, which is better than the first book, which I gave three, so that was good. The next book I read I had such high hopes for, but unfortunately it didn't, I mean it was okay, but it didn't work out as much as I wanted it to. It's Once Ghosted, Twice Shy by Alyssa Cole, and I'm realizing that I really need to stay away from Cole's contemporaries. I, there's, this is from her series The Reluctant Royals. I DNF'd the first book because the tropes didn't go my way. I made it through the second book, it was okay, and this is a novella. I was super excited because it's an FF romance. This couple on the cover, aren't they adorable? They're a real life couple. Um, the author is black, the characters are black. I, there's just so much that should have been going for me, but I only kind of liked it. 
in many contemporary romance series, you don't have to read them in order. You may gain something by reading them in order, but it's not a necessity. Here, though, one of the characters is introduced in the first book, and coming into her way of thinking and her point of view here was kind of a shock because she is very methodical and very precise and almost robo robotic in some ways, and that's just the way her mind works because her profession is basically being the personal assistant to a prince. She has to keep lots of details in order. She's a very detail-oriented person, and that works well for her. But if I had known what she was like from the first book, I might have been able to slip into this more easily. But just being confronted with this point of view all of a sudden left my mind reeling. And I did finally like catch her groove. I figured out what she's like and was able to relax into her point of view. But that took almost the whole novella, because it's only a novella. I should probably tell you something about what the book is about. Back in the first book of this series, this personal assistant to the prince meets a woman through a dating app, and they have some good times, and then it gets cut off abruptly. And this is the second chance romance of them getting back together. Along with the one character's point of view that it took me a long time to get into, the book bounces between two timelines, and it was one of those cases where I would be get comfortable in one timeline and then it would abruptly switch. And I'd be like, no, go back. And that, <laughs> the characterization was good. The romance was fine. I liked how like little things about New York City. Alyssa Cole spends part of her time in New York City. She knows the city. Those little things all were fun details and went well, but overall, fairly disappointed. And as Priscilla over at Bookie Charm noted, there is a B plot line that has to deal with immigration, and everything gets solved pretty darn quickly and easily. And it's hard to believe that anything that deals with immigration law will get solved quickly and easily. So mm, I ended up giving it three stars. I wanted more, and I'm really beginning to think that I need to stop reading her contemporaries, but I'm still going to read the last one in this. I think it's the last one in this series, Prints on Paper, because I cannot resist, I cannot help myself. But after this, I'm gonna to stick to her historicals. Her historicals are awesome. Just gotta stay away from the contemporaries. The next book I finished was the third for the booktube prize. I went into this one blind. I didn't want to know anything. I didn't know anything and that ended up not exactly being the best thing. There looks like there should be a lot of plot, but there's really not all that much plot. And while we get to know the characters and while there's lots of interesting other things going on, I just felt kind of adrift at sea. Like, what else is going on here? What are we driving towards? Only then did I flip, figuratively flip my ebook over and read the jacket copy. And pretty much the whole plot of the book from beginning to end was in the jacket copy, and that's what gave me the structure I needed to understand what was really going on. That was just a weird experience, and I like good plot in my books, and while the character, like I said, the character work was interesting, the plot wasn't quite there, and I did not get along with the writing style. I still think it's better than the first book I read, because it was trying for more, and it did more, and it had some really great thematic issues but, hmm. So I've had three three-star books so far for the booktube prize. Three more to go. We will see. The next book I finished is Night School, A Reader for Grown-Ups by Zofia Bahn, translated by Jim Tucker. It came out January 15th, and I was lucky enough to receive a copy from Open Letter Press. I picked up this book because I love the premise this idea of an encyclopedia of life and something like a reader for grown-ups. That's just my kind of thing. Each story is a header with some kind of subject area. Sometimes it's simple as French or home economics, or sometimes it's a weird combination of things. And in many of the stories, there'll be little interjections from an omniscient kind of teacher-esque voice. And at the end of the stories, there are questions. And the questions, they can be funny, they can be surreal, some of them really made me think, but it all adds to this textbook feel. So, for example, what is the meaning of Allegro Manantropo, and how do we know when Allegro is too tropo? Calculate how many angels can fit on the head of a pin if each angel is 45 millimeters and faithless. Write an essay on the topic, 
if you had the choice, which of your favorite authors would you choose not to meet? The stories loosely fall into several categories. Some of them deal with the history of Eastern Europe, a lot of talk of totalitarianism or just dystopian, almost World War II images, not explicitly necessarily, but those kinds of images and thoughts. Some others are character stories or an experimental narrative idea that's spun out. And others look at an aspect of a famous person's life and not always a person. One of the most moving stories is about Laika, who was the dog that was put into space by the Soviets with the knowledge that she would never return. And it's her in the capsule before she blasts off, leaving a message for the rest of the world. Mostly Soviet children are the people she's aiming it to. And it's touching and funny in turns and also just heart-wrenching in a really interesting way. My favorite story concerns Newton and how he discovered gravity. And the story, like a lot of the other ones, is pretty freewheeling. If you're looking for a definite A through B to C plot, you're not going to be very satisfied, I think, by some of these stories. Some of them do have quite a bit of plot, but a lot of them are images that get spun and twisted and you make connections between them. And it's that joyful, more experimental-ish fiction-y thing going on. Anyway, the Newton story, in some places it made me laugh, some places it really made me think. It can even be a throwaway line. Like there's one line about how people will usually make interjections um, in their native language, which I have totally found to be true. I mean, I went to study abroad and it was for language. So all of my fellow students were multilingual. And we used to joke that if you wanted to know somebody's first language, all you had to do was punch them hard enough. And whatever language they swore at you in, that was their first language. Obviously not recommended, do not do this. But it was wonderful seeing that observation in the book. And in another part, she talks about how, okay, so Newton sees an apple falling and realizes the theory of gravity. But what if he saw a boulder like careening down into a valley? Or what if he threw a ball up in the air a couple hundred times to watch it rise and then hang in the air at that highest point and then eventually fall again? Would we think about Newton the same way? Would we have this same romantic image of him if he discovered, quote unquote, discovered gravity in a different way. I went through this collection extremely slowly. I would read one on a long section of my commute and I would read a few paragraphs and then kind of stare off into space and think about what I had read. And I would, then I would let the story rattle around my brain for a day or two because there were so many interesting things to ruminate on. And as much as I love the collection, I didn't get along with every story. I don't think you can expect to get along with every story. Some of them just went over my head. I didn't know enough about the historical figure maybe or exactly what she was driving at. And there was one which was characters from Dangerous Liaisons who were all emailing each other. And I know nothing about Dangerous Liaisons. I haven't seen the movie. I haven't read it. I was completely lost. I had to give up a couple of pages in and just go to the next story because it didn't mean anything to me. And I want to give a small content warning. There is child abuse and sexual abuse mentioned in short sections. It's not, it's only a couple of stories where it's quickly mentioned, but it is in there. Overall, I really enjoyed the process of reading this book. There are definitely stories that I'm looking forward to going back to and seeing what I get out of them a second time. I highlighted tons of stuff. It kept my brain happy during what can be a mindless time on the train and gave me so many things to think about. So if you're into weird, wonderful short stories, this is an easy recommendation for you. And the last book I have to talk to you guys about today is my fourth book for the BookTube Prize. And I went into this one thinking that the writing style would be an issue, that a lot of people said it would be, it was difficult. And I didn't find it difficult at all. I don't know who those people are. The reading style, writing style, is fine. However, that writing style doesn't seem to be saying very much. I would get to the bottom of a page and then think what, what happened on that page. I'm not sure. Like my eyes got to the bottom, but my brain wasn't there at all. So I put it down and I've taken the rest of this week off. I've been reading one book a week. So after I put it down, I've been reading other things and kind of resting a brain, my brain a bit before digging into book number five. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to return to this book once 
I finish all the other ones because I am a mood reader, so I might just not be in the mood for it. So it's definitely deserving of another try, but we will see. So there we have it, my February part one wrap up. Couldn't really talk about every single book because the booktube prize, but I am doing a vlog that I'm putting together with all of my thoughts about those books as I read them, so you have that to look forward to at the end of March. In the meantime, for February, have you read any of the books I could name? Do you have any opinions about them? Do you want to read them now? Let's have a gab down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!